In this lesson, we'll be learning about Coulomb's law and looking at three examples involving two charges separated by a distance. With that being said, Coulomb's law is the basic force relationship between two charges. This force acts along the line connecting the charges and is repulsive for like charges and attractive for unlike charges. The formula is commonly written as F is equal to K, which is a constant shown right here, times Q1, Q2 over R squared, where R represents the distance between the centers of the two charges. So with that being said, question one reads, two charges, the first charge being 3.0 times 10 to the power of negative eight coulombs, and the second one being negative four times 10 to the power of negative eight, are separated by 6.0 times 10 to the power of three meters as shown below. What is the force of one on the other? As you can tell, this is one of the most basic questions involving Coulomb's law. So I wanna start with something easy and then make our way into questions that are a little more difficult. Let's go ahead and substitute these values into our formula. We have force is equal to the constant K being 9.0 times 10 to the power of nine newtons times meters squared per coulomb squared. It's very important that you write down the units so you can see how they cancel out at the end. And then we'll look at Q1. It is 3.0 times 10 to the power of negative eight coulombs. And these two spheres are attracted to one another because one of them is positive and the other one's negative. That's important. So Q sub two is negative 4.0 times 10 to the power of negative eight coulombs. And that's being divided by R squared. And that represents the distance between their centers, which is 6.0 times 10 to the power of negative three meters all raised to the power of two. But just hold on for a second. If we end up getting a negative force at the very end of our calculation, we need to take the absolute of that number because we're only concerned about the magnitude of the force and not its direction. So you can actually go ahead and make negative 4.0 times 10 to the power of negative eight into a positive number from now and you won't have to worry about that later on. But I'll just leave it the way it is and we'll make the answer positive at the end. The very first thing that I'll do to calculate this is distribute this exponent to that number and to the M. So we will end up with meters squared and using our calculator, we'll do 6.0 times 10 to the power of negative three raised to the power of two, which makes 3.6 times 10 to the power of negative five. 3.6 times 10 to the power of negative five, I'll replace that entire denominator with that expression. Now you can see the units easily canceling out. Meters squared and meters squared will cancel out here. This coulomb and that coulomb will cancel out with these two. And you're left with newtons, which is expected since this is a force. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do this on your calculator. This is very important because a lot of students make mistakes inputting this into their calculator. So that number times 3.0 times 10 to the power of negative eight. Make sure that you put every factor in parentheses, especially if you have a scientific calculator like mine. So that's the top part, that's the numerator, divided by 3.6 times 10 to the power of negative five. And we end up with negative 0 0.30 newtons. I included that zero there because we started off with two significant figures in each of these values, and we should end with two significant figures. And also don't forget to take the absolute of this value, which makes it positive 0 0.30 newtons, as you can see on your screen. And to interpret this result, this is the force each of these charges experiences due to each other. Let's move on now to question two. In question two we're asked, the magnitude of the electrostatic force between two small essentially point-like charged objects is 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative five newtons. Calculate the force of each on the following situations. In question A, the distance between the charge is doubled 
while the size of the charge stays the same. On your screen again is Coulomb's law, this formula that we use in question number one. What I will do to answer this question is first find out what the radius is if the force is what's written on the screen. So let's find the original distance. 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5 will be placed in for F. And since the charges are not changing, Q sub 1 and Q sub 2, we don't have to worry about them in this calculation. In fact, we don't even have to worry about the constant K because it will also remain the same. I'll neutralize the numerators by making them all as 1. 1 times 1 times 1. We get 1 over R squared. Our formula has reduced down to the simple relationship. To solve for R squared, we will multiply both sides by R squared and divide both sides by that factor, then square root. So I have 1 over 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5 and then square root after that. 1 divided by 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5 and we square root that to get 141.42. And this needs to be two, two significant figures, but I'll carry a few numbers in the calculation. And I'll just put a dot there so I don't forget that it's two significant figures. So we found the distance between the two charges originally. And now it's being doubled. The distance is being doubled. So I'll find another force, which I'll call F prime. And I'll say 1 over, and in for its R squared, I'll write down 2r raised to the power of 2. 2 times the original radius raised to the power of 2. And I'll substitute this value in for r to solve for f prime. I have 1 divided by 2 times 141.42. And that entire expression is being raised to the power of 2 which gives us a new force that is, we need that to two significant figures, so 1.3 times 10 to the power of negative five newtons. And if your teacher doesn't care about significant figures, you can simply round to 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative five. If you'd like to see the answers to question B, C, and question three, make sure you watch part two of this series on Coulomb's Law calculations. Hope to see you soon, and if you learned anything, please show your appreciation with a thumbs up and to subscribe to our channel. Talk to you all later.